there we go. It might help if you guys can actually hear me. So supposedly Destiny has an activity for every mood. You know, I have quite a few moods that I go through, and some of them are better than others. But uh, let's talk about that tonight. I've got two guests coming on the show, Datto and Malagate. And we're going to talk about all the activities that we think Destiny might have. So let's get things started, shall we? Welcome to DBO TV, where the DBO stands for destiny.bungie.org, and not something silly like Denver Broncos Omaha. Oh, man, how about that football game, huh? Uh, you know, I really love the the Seattle Seahawks. Russell Wilson is is my man. He played at NCSU for uh, three years, but I could have done with a closer football game, you know. But but. Anyway, let's move on. We're not, we're not talking about Sunday's big game. We're talking about September's big game, which, as we all know, is Cabela's big game. No, it's Destiny. Destiny is September's big game, and um, I think it's uh, pretty interesting. So I want to blast through some Bungie news really quick and then get to my guests and the topic at hand. Uh, not a lot of Bungie news lately. It's been kind of quiet. Uh, relatively, but it sounds like maybe we'll uh, hear more, more coming down the pipe pretty soon. Uh, so I guess the, the first big thing, hold on, I actually want to try this out and do Bungie News with a musical background loop. So hopefully the audio mix will work out because uh, it's, it's kind of hard to test that. But anyway, you might hear some music. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so the, the sort of first bit of Bungie News that came out this week uh, was uh, yet another breaking in article. This one was uh, this one was Adrian uh, Mike Shack, who is a senior artist. Uh, he, he sort of works with the concept team that makes you know these designs for vehicles, weapons, uh, characters, props, environments. Uh, he actually started out as a tester uh, and eventually wound up working at uh, CCP uh, CCP Games, the, the people that make Eve Online. Bungie. He's one of the guys that was part of that Ghosts in the Machine art gallery that uh, my friend Bjorn went to. So, uh, pretty cool. Uh, if you haven't checked out this Breaking In article, you should definitely get it a read. He's a uh, pretty interesting dude. Uh, another Bungie item of the week, of course, is the Bungie Weekly Update. Uh, Deej delivered yet another uh, text pack uh, article for us, but he also included uh, this nice screenshot. Uh, which is pretty cool. Nice big old uh, titan there and some really white stormtrooper looking armor. Uh, I saw a lot of people in NeoGAF uh, looked at this and could, you know, it's pretty obvious this is from the same developer as Reach. But uh, pretty interesting screenshot. Uh, Deej made some interesting remarks about there being some sort of like uh, playtest uh, at Bungie, sort of. Uh, I believe he said, you know, we welcomed friends old and new to visit the studio. Um, but it, it sort of sounded like it was, it was something for, like, uh, Bungie's partners, like maybe Activision or like, game retailers. Uh, I'm not sure if it was the actual game in press, but I probably would have heard something on Twitter. Uh, but maybe maybe we'll hear something out of that soon. But uh, probably not from Deej or Earth, because those guys are traveling. Uh, they're crossing the pond to make new friends that will put a controller in your hand. Or as Deej says, uh, perhaps they already have, so that sounds like maybe it's Sony. Uh, or maybe it's some European games real retailers that they're visiting. Uh, Deej and Earth uh, were 
posting to the Bungie Twitter, you know, they went from Seattle to New York's JFK Airport and then landed uh, at Heathrow in London, uh, but no idea where they're actually ending up. Uh, nothing on the radar that I know of, but Deej was packing light, or so he says. He's got the big old case that says uh, costumes and props on it, uh, which got me wondering, but then he seemed to answer it the next day with uh, pictures showing him trying to get this uh, thorn through customs, uh, through the TSA there. I'm sure that made for an interesting conversation. Uh, but anyway, so the Bungie Weekly Update sort of uh, would have been remiss if it hadn't made a mention of the Super Bowl. I mean, this was last Friday mere days before the big game, uh, so we got this nice wallpaper. I'm sure uh, House Salon is responsible for this thing. Um, but anyway, uh, the, the mail sack, always included at the end of the, uh, the BY, BWU. There were a couple interesting points here. Uh, Deej, in, in answering two different people, uh, sort of brought up mounts. first one he says, you know, from one vehicle hound to another, you'll love your mechanical mount in Destiny. Somebody was asking about, you know, is there going to be something like a warthog in there? And uh, he's, he also mentioned somebody else, you know, we considered animal mounts, but the weight load of the Titan's heavy armor kept breaking their backs, and we knew that PETA would go absolutely berserk. Pretty obvious that's a joke, but uh, I'd noticed at least a couple uh, games websites, news websites, that, that didn't seem to get the joke and had these, you know, hilarious uh, headlines. Bungie not including animal mounts over fears of angering PETA, but eh, what, whatever, if you can't get the joke, don't read the weekly updates. Uh, Deej also answers this question from Jazz Sam, uh, who asks, has, any bun has Bungie any plans for some sort of second screen experience? And the interesting part of Deej's answer is, you know, he says, the companion will let you explore the world of destiny wherever life finds you. Uh, I mean, we already knew that there was going to be a companion app. Here, Deej is giving it, you know, capital letters, The Companion. Uh, is that the, the name of this app? Is that how it's going to be referred to uh, in-universe, perhaps? I don't know, that's uh, that's a little interesting tidbit there. Uh, we also have this question from You Splendid, who asks, uh, The Hive, are these space zombies, or are they more akin to nefarious space mummies? And Deej's response, you know, said, Humanity hasn't had contact with the Hive for generations. It's not likely to be a concern. They're a myth, really. The sort of stories we tell our children to get them to finish their vegetables. I thought this was interesting uh, because Deej seems to be stressing that, you know, that we haven't had contact with the hive, like, compared to, like, the fallen, you know. It's, it seems like in the universe of Destiny, in the trailers and tidbits we've seen, you know, there's definitely acknowledgement of the monsters and the baddies that are out there. So maybe uh, part of the story is you know, us being surprised by the fact that the Hive are real, are still around. Whereas, you know, the Fallen, we know they're out there. Uh, I thought that was kind of cool. And then one last question from the, uh, the mail sack that I thought was interesting. Uh, Tactica, from the, uh, the Guardian Radio uh, user group, asked, Will there be aspirational goals in all game modes, or just certain game modes? Deej gave this really long-winded answer. I tried to pare it down as much as I could. He said, there are certain game modes that will be aspirational and that you won't be able to tackle them until you earn the right. So much of Destiny will be aspirational, though. When we say become legend, we're talking about an urge to become better, stronger, and more talented. And I thought that was kind of uh, an interesting thing, you know, talking about the different game modes of Destiny. Uh, supposedly, Destiny has a act sorry, in activity for every mood. That's one of the, uh, the original seven pillars of destiny, as Jason Jones described it when first talking about the game. Uh, so I thought we should uh, address this and, and think about what that means. What does inactivity for every mood mean? What kind of activities could destiny include? So to help me with that, I'm going to bring two friends on board. The first, his name is Dado. You might know him from his YouTube channel, Dado Does Destiny. Uh, let's get him a call. I just added them on Skype, so hopefully this will work. And Skype has stopped working. Awesome. So let me reboot Skype and uh, try to uh, keep you guys entertained for a bit here. So I'll go ahead and tell you about my second guest while I'm rebooting Skype. 
guy. My second guest is known by the name Maligate. Uh, he's one of the DBO admins. He posts on the front page occasionally. Uh, posts on the forums quite a bit. He's actually a nice old school Bungie fan. Let me try giving Dado a call another time here. Let's see. This guy didn't immediately die this time. fade out my music, right? There he is! Alright, hold on, let me fix this. There we go. Dado, how's it going? Yo! Sorry, I had to mute the stream because there was two of you talking yeah, that, to me at the same time. How, how bad is the uh, the lag there? I haven't tested it lately. <laughs> no, it looks good! I like the setup. Now I can, I can actually see the setup. It looks good. That's right, you're, you're getting the behind-the-scenes look yes, on the green screen. The behind I sort the of look. accidentally let people get a peek at that last time. The <laughs> Skype video chat can uh, can sometimes show things I don't want it to. <laughs> yeah, no, it looks good. It looks good. I like but, the green screen. But yeah, yeah. How, how's it going, dude? And you just, uh... Yeah. Pretty good. Slow news month, you yeah, know. It's, it's been a, what are you going to do, right? It's been a little slow, but that's just part of it, I guess. And the game's still yeah. a ways out. But, um... Yeah. But I, I, just, I wanted to ask you, you know, is, how long ago did you start doing uh, Dado Does Destiny, this this YouTube thing? Um, I started... What was it? May? I think the very, very end of May is when I put out my first video... Uh, I remember like Memorial Day weekend I worked like all weekend to put out that video yeah. and it, it kind of started like I saw the the first announcement in February and I was like alright you know I, I knew Bungie I never played Halo but I knew Bungie from Halo and as I started to learn more and more I was like okay this is something I'm really getting into and you know I had been doing uh, YouTube with Call of Duty but with so many people doing Call of Duty, you never really get a chance to kind of speak your opinion or be a part of the community. There's just way too many people, too many people <laughs> established. Yeah. And so I decided to just quit that and start moving over to Destiny instead. And I'm very glad I made that decision. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was probably around April, early April is when I started to really get into it and you know started to commit myself to. Uh, maybe making content and then yeah. finally in May I put out the first video and it's been going pretty well ever since. That's that's pretty cool. So so I guess uh, you started with Destiny, you weren't really making videos before that or? Um, no, I had been making videos on a Call of Duty channel okay. of yeah, mine, right. which had like around probably around the same amount of subscribers I have now and I'd been doing that on and off for a couple of years never really saw insane progress but uh, I, I did have experience with it, and I am an editor in real life, so that kind of helps too. <laughs> getting introduced or acclimated to YouTube, so yeah, yeah it definitely shows. Yeah. <laughs> but but that's that's pretty cool. Uh, having somebody that comes from the perspective of not not having been a diehard Halo fan, because like uh, a lot of a lot of the Destiny news people, YouTubers, whatever, uh, have been you know pretty familiar with Halo, so it's. It's always interesting to see like this new influx of people that that are experiencing, I guess, Bungie community for the first time, uh, which is kind of cool. Yeah, for sure. I was actually, you know, when you first asked me to be on this, you're like activ activities for every mood, and I'm like, oh god, I need to look up what things were <laughs> in Halo because I have no idea. Like everyone keeps mentioning, like, is there gonna be Forge? Is there gonna be this? I'm like, what is Forge? <laughs> Please must learn so I'm a little more prepared but yeah no I think it gives me a nice little nice nice perspective on the game just because I'm not familiar with Halo at all I'm just I'm not gonna be like saying Halo did this and Halo did that this is part of the, like Halo like <laughs> it's gonna be totally new I'm sure people will be yelling at me in the comments every video like Halo did that Halo did this thing <laughs> but I you know it's gonna be new to me which is great yeah, that's that's cool. All right, well, speaking of uh, old stubborn Bungie fans, let's try and get Maligate in here, and hopefully Skype that's... will continue to be somewhat uh, cooperative. Let's see. Do, do, do. Add people. Do, do. Add to call. All right. Oh. 
Hello. I can hear you, Dan. Here we go. I guess I should turn down my, my Twitch volume. <laughs> Not my help. Let's see. Dude, dude, dude is using a version of Skype that doesn't support group video and sharing. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to have uh, Dado and a picture of Malagate. That's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> we we actually we I swear we we tested this out uh, yesterday and it worked totally fine. But I guess I uh, we didn't actually test out group video. Yeah, the group. We didn't have some third third party stooge to to help us out. But um, that's all right. I don't know. Do you want to try installing a different version of Skype, or do you just want to roll as a, a as a picture? I'm fine with either way. Uh, well, let me quit Skype. I think I know what the problem is. Okay. I'll, I'll be right back. All right. Well, cool. We'll we'll get we'll get Malagate back in in just a second. You know, I probably shouldn't have uh, jinxed myself talking bad about Skype. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what you think of our program, huh? <laughs> yeah, really. Oh well. All right. Um. Well, anyway, so so we can talk about the the non Halo things. <laughs> sure. Sure. And, and then get him back in and, and back here in a minute. Um, so yeah, so activity for every mood. Obviously, there's going to be like campaign and uh, and and multi competitive multiplayer. But you know what what is what does that mean? What kind of activities are going are we going to be playing? Like I think Call of Duty or sorry, Call of Duty, uh, Call of Duty type game types. Uh, apply here as well, you know, there's capture oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. flag there, there's uh, search and destroy type things. Oh Did yeah, they have, they have plenty of stuff. Uh, de oh yeah, definitely. Um, you know, Halo really set the stage for kind of multiplayer shooters, and, you know, I'm not familiar with every game mode Halo has ever had, um, but I assume they had the basics, you know, TDM, capture the flag, uh, I don't know if they've had search and destroy at all, but um, you know, Call of Duty for all the flack that it's get it gets actually has some pretty interesting game modes, and you know, I I expect to see a lot of different game modes in Destiny for at least competitive multiplayer. But what I am what I'm kind of looking forward to, or at least hoping for, mm -hmm. is that we have some not as competitive but still multiplayer game modes because. I don't know about other people, but I'm I'm kind of getting out of the my phase of being really super competitive with my PvP. Like when I was playing Call of Duty, I was really into it, and I was really into like strategies and all this crazy stuff. And I still am to an extent. Yeah. But I'm really hoping for more fun-based games. Uh, you know, like Gary's mod has been on a huge surge in popularity recently for yeah. all these really simple but really fun game modes and I'm I'm kinda getting out of my competitive phase and going more towards the fun phase and just going to play video games to have fun yeah. and so I'm hoping to see those kind of yeah casual kind of multiplayer modes where we can have more fun there's not as much competition so stuff like maybe uh, infected um, uh, Blitz is a new game mode in Call of Duty Ghosts, where it's kind of like capture the flag, but like replace the flags with portals. Um, and there's, you know, like gun games, stuff like that. Um, that's what I'm kind of hoping for in, in regards to uh, multiplayer in uh, terms of game modes. That's a really uh, interesting one you, you bring up, gun game. I mean, Destiny supposedly has, you know, dozens upon dozens of guns. I wonder if yeah. they'll they'll have a, a fun party game mode like that where you're certainly getting to try out like all these guns that you might not have um, yourself, you know, and just sort right. of I guess in Halo it would sort of equate to Fiesta uh, with sort of random guns. Although gun game, it's more of a progression from you know, it's, it's small guns to 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 large awesome weapons. Or or is it right. backwards? Right? It's you start it's kind of like guns. Yeah, it's like pistols at first, then you get into the heavier stuff, and then you actually go to like the weaker stuff, like the last weapon I believe in Call of Duty is like a throwing knife or something. Yeah. 
I think it's a throwing knife, um, or it might just be like your regular melee knife. So you go from like kind of weak to really strong, and then back down to interesting but weak yeah. kind of guns again. But I'm sure there's going to be a plethora of very interesting guns and a lot of variety in the guns that we're going to see in the yeah. game, which I'm very excited for. Of, of course, as a counter argument to that, though, I mean, Bungie's sort of been touting, you know, you are your guardian. You always, you know, you're carrying around your weapons. So mm -hmm. would that sort of break the in-universe immersion if they're suddenly giving you all these these different weird weapons that that aren't yours, and then taking them away and uh, and then sticking you with your old guns again afterwards? I mean, that. Well, they might have a. Uh, if if you want to put lore into the matter, you might be testing out new guns for the military. Oh, that's true. That could be something if you if you want to keep with the lore with something like gun game like oh we have a bunch of new prototype guns let's try them out for a little bit and then you know or you can even have something to where like certain certain game modes like the more competitive like deathmatch slayer kind of stuff like those are definitely in universe I don't want to say canon but you know right real real things in, in real places. But they could also have like the simulator. Like you go back to the tower in the city, and you boot up the simulator, and that gives you all these wacky, uh, wacky game modes. Yeah, that that's definitely something that could that would be great actually. Just <laughs> you know, being able to just kind of just ex explore really the, the maximum potential of what they can do in terms of multiplayer. <laughs> all right, I'm going to take a second and see if I can try and get Dan back in this call. See if he's fixed his stuff. We're still connected, right? I hear you. Oh wait, I got. I can still hear you. I get video on myself, but I don't get. It, apparently, it's not pumping to the call. No, I don't see it either. No. Oh well. We can roll like this. <laughs> All right. So what? So what, what about you? I, I, sorry, I assume that you had like dropped out of the call. I've been talking <laughs> over you the whole time. This whole time. Um, I have been I have been wondering a lot about the how the how the player is supposed to get into the world and then transition from one activity to the next without without going through a menu. Mm. Well, didn't they have? I remember. From the very, very beginning, they've always had like they had like that menu in the first Vidoc. Let me see if we can find it. Yeah, I know. There we go. I know this. Yeah, it had uh, it had chapter three, Shores of Time. So that's like your story mode, bounty, collect your weekly bonus, strike, raid, faction wars, which is we assume to be PvP now. Um, I think you're gonna have to have menus at some point in the game. I think it's just an an, an inevitability. Um, you know, during the campaign or, or, or something like that, yeah, we can go and try and go as very limited on the UI as possible, but I think for certain things there's going to need to be some sort of menu, which I am very okay with, and I'm sure many other people are okay with. <laughs> uh, I, I just I, I figured that maybe they would try to some degree to uh, emulate the Borderlands model, where there were certain PvP arenas buried in the game, you know, in the world at some in right. places. And I figured that one of the questions that they were going to try to answer about how do you make sure that players have um, they're matched up against other players of a similar. Uh, skill level would be that you can just put these, you can put those PvP areas in areas where it would really take a lower level character a lot of struggle to get there in the first place. Sort of like the um, uh, WoW uh, World of Warcraft had the, these kind of PvP zones, although they weren't, it, j it wasn't just you know, go in and kill people, there were actually objectives, but I get, I get what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. Um, I mean, they have said that there is no kind of open world PvP but mm -hmm. I don't think that limits them. Like, I think they might do something like you were just describing, have a designated PvP zone. It's just yeah. how they would regulate it. You know, would you just would it just be a giant free for all, or would uh, it be divided into five teams where each team was their faction? Because they said factions 
uh, are involved in multiplayer now. Um, it would just kind of be something that they would have to, I don't know, kind of work with. Would it be like zone control? Like if you just if you control more zones than other people, would you get bonuses? Or I don't know. I'm just talking out of my butt. But yeah, yeah, no, no, no. But there, there's, I mean, there's so much potential for various ways to present that kind of stuff. I just, I actually hope that that menu system that we saw was more of a mock-up and not representative of that immersive experience because I, I feel like the impression that I've gotten so far is that it we our experiences should is more more than likely not to be interrupted with that kind of an interface but maybe that's just wishful thinking on my part right um, yeah it, it really depends on how they want to take it personally I like the the menu screen I don't mind it that much um, it's on. I can see it on right now. So we're like thirty seconds in front of it. But you know, <laughs> I I wouldn't mind seeing something like this pop up as soon as I turn on the game. I I can't remember if they said like if you, you'll just turn on the game and be instantly in the world. Right. Uh. But you know, if I loaded up the game and I saw something like this, I wouldn't mind. Although I imagine it, it may be like I figured this kind of menu would be maybe when you're in the city and I don't know maybe you have like a computer or maybe on your spaceship when you first go in you can kind of choose like okay what are we gonna do next right the, um, one of the games that uh, a number of folks in the uh, in the community have been playing recently was the um, was uh, Iron Brigade on Xbox Live and they've got a there's a lobby system that makes me it I think it takes that kind of approach that at least in my opinion, Bungie, uh, Bungie should probably take the test. It, it drops you into it drops you into a world. You have your avatar. You can run around. You can gesture at other players and stuff like that as you're getting ready. And it's kind of a large lobby. And then the characters will all run over to a terminal and choose, you know, what the mission is, whatever they're going to do. You get a countdown. You get time to you know uh, equip all your gear and stuff like that. And then and then the mission will launch. Um, I figure something along those lines because from the word go, from the, the second that you hit, you know, a button on the on the on the menu, you're you're in you're in this engine, you're in this environment that's that's drawn by the engine, uh, and you're and you're already interacting with other players. Um, I figured that the, if something to that degree was what they um, was what they were what they may be going for. That that definitely makes a lot of sense. Like I can see it, especially with this whole. Uh, matchmaking in the background thing that Destiny's built on. Like, you decide to go into mm -hmm. a, a mm -hmm. multiplayer match, and it says, like, oh, okay, we'll set, you, set one up for you, but you can still keep, you know, running around outside mm -hmm. of the arena, and then we'll let you know when the battle is ready ready to start. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there is sort of a hurdle there in that, you know, for all the other shared world shooter stuff, they can just drop people in and out uh, at any time, mm -hmm. whereas with a competitive multiplayer match, you know everybody sort of has to start at the same time. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. and, and 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 more and and more in line with that that very point, um, it it definitely breaks a little bit of the immersion if you're out in uh, if you're out in the, you know on a mission somewhere and somebody just drops into your session. Yeah, I re I remember them uh, a very long time ago. Uh, mentioning something like, oh, we were stuck on a boss or whatever and like two level 40 something, I don't know if it was level 40, but two higher level people just kind of walked in and like helped us out with some PvE stuff and I actually thought, yeah, like it's cool but then you there there's also a system for like abuse with that because you can just have your friends kind of just steamroll everything for you, but I guess that's that's another uh, topic for another day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. That would be a good good conversation for for later. Is is how is Destiny going to deal with players of different skill levels playing together? Right. That's that's definitely a, a, another deep rabbit hole we can jump into. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, jumping jump back to like the different types of activities. I mean, we've sort of been focused on like competitive multiplayer here and, and the fun casual games as well. I I guess if I was going to compare that to a Halo thing, it'd be like action sack. You know, you've got um, different fiesta modes and hockey and games like that, mm -hmm. but uh, there are even other like, you know, it's not just game modes; it's activities. And one one of the things that I was was curious about was like theater mode. Is that going to be an activity in Destiny, and are they going to try and present that as an in-universe thing? 
um, you know, again, sort of trying to avoid having you pop out to some main menu and then switching from, you know, this is the, the living world of Destiny, and now I'm right. in, you know, this this separate theater mode. Uh, I could sort of see that being a part of the game. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Um, I think that there are pretty... I think that there are actually pretty easy ways for them to work it in to... Um, to e- even to the lore a little bit if they want to, but... Mm. Um, and, and, and actually, just to tie in something you were talking about a little bit earlier um, regarding the, uh, the Forge stuff, I figured it would be just... It would be reasonably easy, even, you know, lore-wise, to say, you know, within the system or in some... In some um, in some designated area, you know, this is where you know the PvP matches are, and whatever the lore uses to explain that, that same environment can be used for forge and for the uh, the theater functions without without really breaking um, without really breaking a uh, kind of canonical barrier. If you don't, it, it, I, at least I think it's it's relatively easy to keep from doing that in that in that circumstance. Right. Yeah, one of the I know one of actually the big complaints in Call of Duty Ghosts was the complete removal of any kind of theater mode, mm-hmm. and I abused theater mode <laughs> when I did Call of Duty videos. I abused the hell out of it just because it was so helpful for you know for for making videos. Even you know it could be something funny, or if you want to go something more strategic, you can get a nice open view of what you want to be doing and all that kind of stuff. And I know a lot of people were mad about the removal of it from from Ghosts. That being said, I really hope they do manage to put in some kind of um, some kind of theater mode into Destiny. How they do it, I could care less if they want to work it in with the lore or not. If they just want to say, <laughs> "Here's a theater mode." <laughs> That's fine with me, yeah. because I know the potential of just people creating anything through theater mode is just so high, self-included. Yeah. And I think it's, it's going to be maybe not necessity, but something very strongly, strongly, strongly suggested. Yeah. And I'd be very surprised if it didn't have it, because you know that was a big part of... Uh, like the the Halo community, starting starting with Halo Three, and then going through uh, through Reach, uh, as far as Bungie games are concerned, like that that was a great source of community content. People making montages, people making machinima, uh, like it was it was very very useful. Uh, and to think that Bungie would like create this this new game this new game engine. And they've already got all the guys that know how to make theater mode. To not sort of design it with that in mind from the get go, uh, I'd be very surprised if, if they went that route. Now yeah. talking talking about keeping things. Sorry, would would you say? just made a great comment? Your ghosts record your battles and no, Hylobos, that was that was literally what I was about to say. <laughs> I, I shouldn't have let you interrupt. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, no, that that was exactly like literally the sentence I was about to say was That's uh, great. as far as as incorporating it in universe into the lore, you know, you've got this ghost that is a, a wonderful way of implementing all of these these sort of menu like systems, but still having that as like this in universe thing. Like, yeah, your your ghost is your portable flying D V R and he's just recording all of your battles, and then when you're done, yeah. you go back to the tower, and the ghost can replay it for you as a simulation, and you can move the camera around and stuff. Or, like, uh, even if you don't go back to the tower, then he's he's your, your screenshot uh, cameraman. Kind of like right. how Grand Theft Auto V, you know, people can take selfies. Well, now you've got this floating, talking camera uh, voiced by Peter Dinklage, that you can sort of like <laughs> command and say, yeah. "Hey, take a picture of me walking around this awesome dune on Mars," and he could probably even say something funny. Or, or if you're playing uh, in campaign mode, and you get this awesome triple kill on like a couple fallen captains, like your ghost could be like, "Man, I can't wait to see the replay of that when we go back to the tower." Uh, <laughs> so that yeah. was sort of that was sort of my idea for there, but I guess Hylobos beat me to it in the chat. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that would that would be great. I just. I don't know the logistics of being like I would. I'm the kind of person who would love to record everything, so I just don't even know the logistics of being able to 
save on to everything. Maybe you only have like you know the past thirty minutes or something like that. I don't yeah. know, but I think the ghost acting as as your theater mode is an awesome, awesome idea. <laughs> no, Malgate, any thoughts on the on that? I guess I'm just thinking like if if raids and strikes are supposed to be like relatively. Or at, at least the impression I was given is that relatively short engagements mm-hmm. that would not 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 to be as long as uh, you know like a, what what a campaign mission would be. Um, I mean, even even with uh, some of the Halo titles, you, you you have campaign films that that can you know stretch for a significant amount of time. Yeah. I don't see why I don't see why, um, and especially with you know now that that's been pointed out. Why they wouldn't? Why that wouldn't just be the, you know, the kind of canonical explanation for everything, but also, um, that that whole community that's you know that that it's sprung up behind Machinum and everything else would be would be sorely lacking with this, and I can't imagine that they would they would they would overlook them or not or not show that that um, that group some support. Oh. oh yeah, and then you know continuing sort of along the same lines of theater mode is, is forge mode. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the community would be pretty disappointed to not get some sort of creative mode like that uh, in Destiny. And mm-hmm. it's, it's a lot of the same arguments and, and points there, you know. They had, to, they had the tech before, and they're creating this new game, so you'd hope that they would, they would have... They, they would at least give us feature parity. But... Still, on on the flip side of the coin, this this isn't a Halo game. You know, they're sort of starting from scratch, so maybe they're mm-hmm. they're sort of tightening up and uh, having a more focused experience. Is is how somebody in marketing would probably say it. You know, like <sighs> sort of focusing on a smaller set of features, so then for later games, Destiny Two, they can widen that out again. Like, let's just get this shared world shooter thing down, and we put. You know, we built the engine in a way that it'll make it easier for us to add back these features that that Bungie fans are used to. Uh, right. you know, I, I think that there's there's just no way. There's no way that they're gonna. I, I feel I would just be totally shocked if they didn't include it because if you think about it, you don't really have to worry about um, you don't have to worry about weapon spawns anymore. Mm-hmm. You've got the, the you know all the guardians have their weapons. You don't even have to worry about. Uh, I mean, maybe maybe some ammo spawns, but uh, I mean, ammo is going to be rewarded for kills anyway. So there's a, there's a, there's a number of those considerations that you don't have to work in to make a good map, and it's it, it seems to me like it would all be more about that straight geometry. Hmm. Uh, I am not familiar with Forge mode. I am not familiar with Halo mode. For for Halo multiplayer, I've come to the conclusion that. There's like there's weapons and and special stuff that you guys can pick off the field while you guys are playing, right? And the whole point is controlling these kind of power power spots where yeah. weapons are going to spawn or all. Yeah, okay. very very much so. Gotcha. Yeah, no, because from from my line of FPS experience, that was, I mean, there were certain spots of the map that you certainly like to control, but nothing along the lines of getting extra weapons. Um, yeah, I think Forge mode. Or whatever the equivalent would be in Destiny would be a great addition, just because the community can drive so much content and they can deliver so much content faster than Bungie could ever manage to do, which I think is a good inspiration behind EverQuest next. Mm. Uh, just having like the community do a lot of not not really the work, but being able to think of things that your team would never be able to think of in a hundred years yep. and just being able to produce so much content that people are never ever bored yep. and that's I think the most important thing is what Bungie is going for is making sure people are never bored people always have something to do and if you give the community that ability to create they are never going to run out of things to do yeah definitely yep. I mean you look at I mean, not just Halo, but you look at games like like Minecraft. You know that that game sure. has this huge following, and it's because of that sort of it's it's feeding that creative urge of people. Um, I think sort of one quote that I always like to go back to is uh, Joseph Staten uh, talking about games. This was like two years ago. You know, like eventually this world is going to become the players. You know, it's going to become more their world than ours that we're building. And I don't know if he was talking about Forge or more about, you know, just players having owner 
you know, having this ownership of their guardian, their character. But mm-hmm. uh, it's, it certainly sounds uh, sounds pretty cool. I, I remember them. I feel like I remember them saying somewhere that there are going to be some community-driven things. I, I'm not sure if they were just talking about you know like coming onto the forums and talking you know about stuff that you've did, and, you know, all that good stuff. All that's well and dandy, but it's nothing compared to something like Forge Mode, for example. Yeah. Let's see if I can find we should, a source we should definitely on that. At least mention in passing Grognock, uh, yeah. which could be just a bungee only tool uh but you know maybe that maybe we'll get some form of grognock uh on our side to use that would be outstanding as well if, if yeah. nothing else then you know we'll have forge and then bungee will have grognock to sort of curate that stuff and, and push it out to everybody else faster um so uh that should be pretty cool it'll, it'll be interesting to see what what kind of tools we get and how they compare to uh, to other games. For sure, I'm not really the creative one, but I will uh, soak up. <laughs> I will soak up any content people want to deliver. <laughs> yeah, the the um, I mean the the legacy of of uh, what was it? Uh, Halo Three was the one that introduced it, right? Yeah, Halo. Th- yeah. Forge Forge came in Halo Three first. It was planned for Halo Two, but that was one of the big things that got cut. Right. See, I, I think that the especially with, with what you were saying about you know the wor- what Staten said about the world becoming the players, but also the idea of of a, an activity for every mood. Well, there's so much of the community that was that lived on in you know after after Halo Three was less popular with the, the newer titles that came out, uh, but you know through Reach, uh, any of the games that have included that, um, there has been a very very robust. Um, a forge community, and not only that, but their whole practice of setting up entire hoppers that are just community-made maps. I mean, I think that that's, if I'm not mistaken, they're one of the first developers that that cultivated that kind of culture among the player base. And um, I just can't see them. It's not even a matter of capitalizing on it. It's just planting the seed to foster community. I think that it's it's such a strong. Um, addition to community that helps it's it's part of what um, it's like a self perpetuating thing uh, that I I just I can't imagine that we won't see something like that and even if we don't see it right at launch somewhere down the line they'll they'll have to roll it out yeah definitely. oh yeah for sure and and it's definitely something that Bungie sort of sort of maybe maybe not have been the first to to debut. Uh, especially if you include like PC games, like those oh, those have had you know mods and sure, sure, for sure. a long time, mm-hmm. but but they definitely uh, advanced that quite a bit in the console space. Uh, so I'm sure Bungie is well aware of their legacy. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. To claim that. So so one one thing that I wanted to bring up, um, coming from uh, this thread on DBO that that Xenos uh, made, that sort of sort of got me on this topic to begin with. Um, had a couple slides that we've already sort of covered, so I'll skip those. But one thing I wanted to bring up uh, was this post by Blue Runner, who said, uh, "With everyone having personal speeders, I hope there's some kind of race game type that goes across the maps. You know, maybe have a he says a pubic area, maybe have a public area <laughs> you stop in to enter the race game type, then you race through the checkpoints in the main worlds. Uh, and that that definitely sounds, and you know, it's different enough from from the other game types that it, you could." call it uh, an activity for a different kind of mood. I'm in the mood to race. And I think it brings up a very good point. You know, if everybody's going to have uh, their their sparrows that they can pull out at any time. So I can imagine that even without some sort of bungee, uh, bungee-created game type, you're going to see people racing each other around the maps just, just to begin with. Uh, so I, I think that would be, be very interesting. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that's that's made an official thing in the game. Um, so yeah. I I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility at all. One another thing that I remember from what was it the artist commentary, they said someone mentioned something about gambling for gear, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh yeah, that's something I can talk about on the show, and I don't I'm not really sure how that would work. Maybe they would do. You know, maybe some kind of like hardcore one v one gamble with your gear, just comes some kind of thing, or 
you know, maybe a more traditional yeah. slot, yeah, casino, slot machine. Like Borderlands uh, has very simple just slot machines that you can win guns out of. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we'll see people winning guns, at least anything top tier, um, as they've said in the past that everything in the game will be earned. Yeah. But uh, I think gambling is also wide open, easy, casual activity that people can do. You know, along with racing, people want to bet on who's going to win in the race. <laughs> Fine oh, by yeah. me. The the possibilities are just out of control. I'm very glad that you brought up the uh, idea of betting on who's going to win a race because take take some of that idea. I've I've thought based especially with how competitive you hear some of the bungee guys talk about how they get in PvP mm-hmm. um, and how competitive you know how the kind of competitive play that lots of their games in the past have fostered. Um, I would really love to see a um, kind of a put up or shut up mode where, you know, if you really want to, if you really want to come in there with a the swagger, you can you can put down a piece of gear and say, I'm going to wager this piece of gear <laughs> in the match, and the other person, if the other person beats you, well, they will certainly have earned that, and it goes, oh, yeah. and and it completely dovetails with the whole idea of, oh, this was so, ins-, you know, whoever whoever wh- whatever legendary player this was. Had a match with this other guy or this other, you know, whoever against these other opponents, and they won. You know, they won this legendary weapon that that only this one, uh, this one player uh, had earned through something. Right. I, I think that that really would begin to imbue the world with uh, a reality that that's not written into the canon by the developer. That's not even something that has. That's in kind of an organic, organically evolved culture like the uh, the found the the forge stuff. Uh, it's that that's that's in world events they're not orchestrated by any by anybody else but the player and they're still significant they still make up part of the fabric of the story of that world <laughs> right that's, that's that's pretty cool like ra- racing for pink slips almost but with guns yeah totally the only thing i would be concerned about is like that all sounds super awesome and i'm totally down but there's always the option for abuse and so i'm wondering how bungie would be able to curve that abuse of like you know saying uh you know like oh top rated player wants to give his weapon to one of his buddies and you know they just give it to him or something like that or or like you know people come up with whatever the hell idea they want to rig something or steal something you know there's always that possibility as negative as i'm being sure. um of any or of any sort of abuse so i'm wondering how that would be handled how bungie would be able to handle something like that it could always be that there's a you know it, it, just for example uh, if I'm and I'm just I'm just making stuff up here this is all conjecture but uh, yeah. if I'm if I'm a you know level fifty something and there there can be a bracket where you're you can only play people you can you can only enter like a betting match like that with um, players within a certain skill range from you and um, all you know any other another player that's in there that's in that same hopper that's put up something to wager. It's just going to be a randomized match against anybody else in that pool. So the only way you'd be and just and that's just to speak to your specific. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a very good idea. Right. So I mean, and 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 lots of little things like that. I mean, I, I think that they're. I mean, obviously we all know they're very sharp guys over there. They're they're going to think of ways to keep people from from abusing the system. But but absolutely, uh, any system is um, going to be a target of abuse, especially with you know with a, with a title like this. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and, and, and especially any AAA title, people are, are certainly going to try to to break anything they can. So, if there's a way around it, people will try to find it. But yeah, I mean, you could also have you know those high level weapons have a level requirement. You know, you have to be 20 or higher to use this awesome gun. Sure. So then, you know, mm-hmm. your your level 25 buddy couldn't give it to you know your level one character uh-huh. and, uh, and just sort of uh, speed run you through the game. Yeah. yeah. Thunderlord just the Thunderlord inherited by level two just completely wipes him out when he picks him up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that'll that'll be it'll be interesting to see how they handle that. Uh, are there any other kind of like off the wall activities you guys can think of that that we might see pop up in Destiny? I mean, I'm sure there's going to be you know t- tons of stuff. Uh, I'm sure. Well, there's there's you know ex- the exploration and story element. There is the PvP element. Uh, like and you know, as we've already discussed, the 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 creation element of, of the forge the forge like stuff. 
uh, machinima, um, racing. I mean, it's oh, uh, people uh, people in the um, in the forums have talked about. I mean, I guess we've talked here too about um, gambling, but but even just um, like in Red Dead and things like that, where there is um, card games, um, there's lots of other little activities. I mean, they could. I don't know that it's stuff that. I guess I don't know anything else that comes up that comes to mind for me falls outside of the normal range of like those action oriented um, those action oriented activities mm. from from you know slow to fast. So I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm <laughs> maybe I'm out of ideas for the moment. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's, uh, there's definitely dancing, right? The emotes. Right. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe maybe there's a dancing mini game. Dan- or, dance uh, studio. <laughs> yeah, or maybe or uh, but but more realistically, like uh, Portal Two had sort of sort of emotes, and they had uh, rock paper scissors. Maybe we'll be able to play. Uh, oh sure. Rochambeau with the, all the yeah, yeah, people yeah. you meet in Destiny. <laughs> I think this is already a game in development. Or I remember seeing something about it, but an activity where one player becomes the boss of a raid mm-hmm. and has it uh, has access to all of its abilities and stuff like that, and your friends come fight you. I feel like that's a game. I, I'm pr- actually I'm 100 percent sure that's a game yeah, already in development. Uh, Evolve, I think. Was that? I don't, I don't remember I the name. That's, the that's name it. it. It's but like, that I think that something like that would be very I'm interesting. Black Rock is making that. Yeah, that sounds really cool. <laughs> um. Beyond that, you know, I've been playing through uh, Final Fantasy X lately, and the thing I love about that game is that there's so much extra stuff to do beyond the campaign. I just don't know if anything in that game would really fit into Destiny's kind of uh, mini-game kind of culture. Like, uh, Final Fantasy X has, like, uh, the monster arena where you can, as you capture other monsters from all all over the world... You can pay to fight incredibly, incredibly tough uh, bosses and stuff like that. I don't know if we'll see anything like that in Destiny. Although maybe, uh, what like you were talking about earlier, like the simulation room. Uh, you know, maybe they can come up with something like that where you can kind of test out weaponry or test out, uh, you know, different enemy monsters or stuff like that. You know, it's I don't think anything else would... Uh, there's just a section of the wall you have to walk up to, and you, you pick off cans from a distance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I, I don't think we'd see anything like that, at least not right off the bat. All right. Well, uh, I guess time will tell. And uh, and it, it, I wouldn't be surprised if that's something that we won't even understand the answer to until Destiny has been out for months, because it sounds like you know, Bungie's intent on sort of rolling things out over time. Maybe, maybe you know, at the beginning we'll we'll only get we'll only see you know a certain certain number of things, and then Bungie will say, "Oh yeah, by the way, you can play rock paper scissors. We just haven't let you do it yet." Right. Um, yeah. I mean, this is a ten year project. They got plenty of time. I know a lot of people are complaining, like, "Why don't you have space combat?" And, then, <laughs> then, and I'm like, I'm just thinking the whole time. You know, it's like, let them. Let them set the groundwork yeah. for the game first. We have eight, ten years for them to implement any sort of space combat stuff. They said it's a first-person shooter. Let's keep it a first-person shooter for now while they establish their IP, establish the world. And then as time moves on, maybe we see space combat. Who knows? Yeah. But, you know, save it. which save I would for be Destiny for. Too. <laughs> Right, exactly. They got to save some stuff. They can't put it all in the first game. Yeah, and yeah, we didn't get it in Halo until the fourth game in the series, so <laughs> there you go. Yeah. One, one uh, I don't know if there's any other good examples at the moment, but uh, one example of a game, a recent game that um, started with kind of a limited palette and then ex- and greatly expanded it was um, Mass Effect Three. When you, the multiplayer component of that, oh yeah, there was a very there was a very short list of maps that were very. Um, Constricted. There was a you know a small selection of enemies that you, uh, that you could you know choose to fight against, um, and over time, just even just for free, uh, they added they they kept adding maps. I'm sure that we can expect something to that degree, um, but all of the classes that, that that they made available, all of the races that they made available, given you know the rich fiction of that world, um, 
they just kept rolling stuff out, you know, time after time after time, and people would come back and say, "Oh, I haven't, I haven't touched this game in four or five months because I, you know, I got busy playing other games or I just got busy doing other things." And I come back, and it's almost a completely new experience. <laughs> like, and and I think that uh, the way that they're set up to um, to to do Destiny, I think that it 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 will probably lend itself to a certain degree of that. The thing that I would be concerned about is also the same kind of thing that I saw happen with uh, Mass Effect 3 was some some of the community will play it and kind of get burned out and then move on to other things before they get to see all that good stuff you right. know, come mm-hmm. about. Hmm. Uh, that'll, that'll be interesting, you know, like just like Mass Effect's like weapon packs and stuff. You know, mm-hmm. see new, de- new weapons pop up in Destiny. Uh, could be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Well, I think that'll that'll pretty much cover uh, cover this. So let's uh, let's move along and do a quick beat the chat this week. Uh, <laughs> I've only got uh, two beta codes as prizes, uh, and instead of pitting you guys against the chat and doing this really long thing, I think I'm just going to uh, drop these these bungee trivia questions into the chat. Uh, I guess that'll benefit Dado since uh, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't a, know a somewhat new Bungie fan, uh, especially considering some of my previous questions have been really obscure. I, I was sort of surprised in previous weeks that I was able to, to stump everyone uh, times. But, uh, but yeah, so let's... Uh, hold on, let me switch to my awesome Beat the Chat logo here. Yeah, <laughs> Beat the Chat. Let's do this. Uh, today's, uh, today's prizes are donated from uh, donated by the Sertelios, uh who sent me a nice nice email and gave me two B- destiny beta codes to, to give away so uh, so let's let's do this uh, if you're watching live on the twitch stream right now uh, hopefully you're in the chat uh, it's been pretty lively today I think everybody's enjoying it uh, so I'm gonna drop uh, a couple bungee trivia questions in there and the first person to answer, uh, I'll be sure to remember your name, and I'll get in touch with you somehow, and get you these Destiny beta codes. So, uh, Dado and Malgate, you guys are of course welcome to uh, participate as well if you, if you know the answers to these. <laughs> oh boy, um, you got some myth, some myth questions in there. <laughs> I, I, I sort of, uh, I sort of went a little newer school than those. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> actually, okay, no, actually, I've got a got a nice. Old marathon one. Let me drop oh. this into the chat. Give him a warning. Give All him right. a warning. Here it comes. Trivia question incoming. Three, two, one. <gasps> All right. So, what is the internal name of the marathon map editor that was later repackaged and included in Marathon Infinity as Forge? Oh. I totally yeah. know this. Super know this. Super know it. Anvil. I don't think that's An- what I'm. That's not what I'm looking for, Pedrag. Oh, it's I not should. Anvil. I thought it was Anvil. Switch to my chat. Oh, loathing. Here. Was it loathing? What was that, Malgate? Was it loathing? Loathing. No. Steve, John, Matt. All right, so I, I sort of figured this one might might stump people as as well. Uh, lately, I've been sort of traveling through the old Bungie.org uh, archives, which have been leading to me leading me to a bunch of Bungie.net pages as well, old interviews, weekly updates, that kind of stuff. So this is this is uh, something I stumbled upon. Uh, so if nobody gets it here in the next couple seconds, I've got two more questions that sh- should hopefully be a lot easier for people to get. Um, Zenos says he d- he wants to say, but he doesn't need a beta code. Okay, Zenos, if you know the answer, <laughs> answer it anyway. Uh, answer anyway. I have do it. More Peer questions. pressure. Let's see if Zenos knows the answer to this. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. All right, Zenos. Uh, Fear and loathing were the uh, the editors for myth. I, I have myth on the brain. Mm. Xenos, Xenos is asleep at the wheel. <laughs> not dog, not forte. 
Nope. All right. And it's definitely not Steve. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> you got you got shiz. You got one of the letters right. <laughs> oh, closer than anybody else. All right, Xenos. He seems to be aware that we want his answer. Come on. All right, I'm going to start typing it in. The answer is Vulcan. Vulcan Ooh. was the uh, name of the internal map editor tool for, for Marathon. And uh, and one of the Bungie employees sort of repackaged it, fixed it up, and distributed that with Marathon Infinity as Forge. And so you can sort of see where the names come from. Vulcan, Forge. All right, sorry. A little too obscure. But thankfully, I have another question here. Let me drop this in. All right. Next question. Three, two, one. That's the same question. That's the no. same. Well, hold on. <laughs> copy, copy and paste is not. <laughs> Three, two, one. There we go. Which Bungie employee once wrestled a bear? This is you got question. me. I don't. All right, that's three incorrect guesses. Irk? No, it's not Irk. Not Shishka. Not Nate Walpole. He might have wrestled a llama. Xenos. Xenos has the correct answer <laughs> with Jerome. Oh. But you know what? Xenos earlier admitted to already having a beta code, so I'm gonna give it to Pyro Maniacal here. Woo! Mod. He's Pyro mod. Wins. Pyro wins. He also gave me Jerome's last name, so I'll use that technicality to, to give it to him instead of Xenos. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Pyro, uh, send me an email, ncsuduncan at bungie.org, or I'll get in touch with you on Twitch. So, all right, so I have one more question because I have two, two beta codes to give out. This last question should also be a pretty easy one. Let's send it out. Next question. Let me make sure I'm actually copying and pasting correctly this time. Three, two, one, do. All right, Jerome Simpson. <laughs> Incorrect. And Padraig. Yeah. That 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 should have been a pretty easy one. It was Halo Three Recon, and um, was the original name of uh, of that. It was supposed to be like a cheaper forty dollar expansion type thing, but uh, Microsoft delayed it. Uh, and made Bungie rename it to Halo 3 ODST. Now, uh, now Malagate, do you know why they had to rename this game? I do not. Dad, I'm, I'm no. going to assume you, Dad, you have no idea. Okay, so rumor has it, now I can't completely confirm this, but I feel somewhat confident. Rumor has it that the reason Halo 3 Recon was renamed is because there was another popular shooter video game with Recon in the title. Oh, Ghost, Ghost yeah, Recon? Yeah, Ghost Recon. Ghost That's Recon. why they, they changed the name, because they didn't want any sort of uh, brand uh, confusion. I get that. There. But, yeah, but again, that's that. that's the rumor. I have no uh, no confirmation of that beyond something a little birdie might have told me. But anyway, uh, Padraig, you get the code. It makes, it makes the right sure amount can... of stupid business sense. Say what? It makes the right amount of stupid business sense. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of those things. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, video game names. There have never been any controversies over video game names, right? Ever. Like Candy Crush Saga. Baby Stomper 3. Never. <laughs> but, anyway, all right, well, that'll pretty much do that. Uh, Datto, Maligate, thank you guys for uh, for coming on, even if just by voice, Mal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I'll have to get... I have to get you on a future show once uh, we've we figured out this Skype thing, so everybody can see your uh, your glorious face. Absolutely. That, or you've been broadcasting video this entire time, and you're just really good at ventriloquism and standing still, right? Is that it? <laughs> Staring contest champion. <laughs>
But yeah, thanks. Thank you guys for coming on. Uh, oh, Dado, this was, it was fun. A pleasure having you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This was fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty cool. I, I I'm really liking this whole you know having two guests on each week discuss discussion format. So I, I'm definitely gonna keep this going. And uh, cool. I'll eventually run out of uh, fresh guests, so I'll have to bug you guys again to call come me on, up. Call uh, me up. Day. And eventually we'll have uh, you know actual you know destiny in our hands and a ton of new stuff to talk about then. So uh, yes. So yeah. So it'll be pretty good. Th- thanks again, guys. Yeah, no oh, problem. problem. All right. Let me figure out how I'm gonna hang up on you. There we go. All right. Well, that pretty much does it for this episode of the show. Uh, as always, I would absolutely love to hear all of your feedback over on the forums. That's destiny.bungie.org slash forum. Go there. If you don't have an account, sign up. It's a pretty awesome group of people there. Um, if you're watching the show live right now, you're obviously on Twitch. But if you want to find this show later, the easiest place to do that is destiny.bungie.org slash dbotv. Uh, and if you want to catch new episodes, the, the best way for that is to subscribe. Uh, our YouTube channel is Destiny Bungie Org, same as our Twitch channel. If you subscribe, you always get those annoying email notices whenever new episodes pop up, or, or in the case of Twitch, whenever I start broadcasting. Uh, I don't always do the best job of promoting the show, so that, that would definitely help you out. Um, and as always, DBO is... Uh, is out there on all the social media. We've got a Facebook page. We've got a Twitter account. And there's my personal Twitter account as well. Give those a follow. Uh, but thank you guys for watching the show. Uh, it's always fun. Uh, I'll see you guys next... Guys and gals. I always say guys. I always mean that in a very inclusive uh, uh, way. Uh, but thanks, everybody, for watching the show. I'll see you next week. Let's do this. All right. And there is a problem with the credits. The, my post-credits bumper just seems to be screwing up on me, so you'll hear sound, but you won't actually see anything. And this week I do actually have some real credits here. Uh, I'm not sure. Definitely give me feedback on how that music during the bungee news portion. All right. All right. Hold on. Do, do, do. Post show. Let's do this. There he is. See, I told I told everybody this was working fine yesterday. I, got, I thought that it might be because um, I got a flash update notification, but I don't know if Skype uses Flash. I'm not sure. Are you sure you're using, are you sure you have the latest version of Skype? Like, maybe that's uh, it? Uh, I'm not sure that I do. What's that, the, what uh, version do you have? That might, hold, yeah, let me check my version. It's very possible that's exactly what the problem is. Do, 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 I have 6.11 oh, yeah. point something. Yeah, I, I'm 510. Oh, uh, that, that might have been it. Oh, well. Uh, I'm sure that's it. <laughs> But yes, everybody, this is Maligate. He's he's actually a real person and not a floating disembodied <laughs> voice. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'll definitely have to get you on a uh, future episode now that we've got that figured out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had I had notes that I uh, I didn't even I didn't even think to uh, to to look at while we were um, while we were talking because there was stuff about the companion that I wanted to remark about. Oh yeah. Well, what's Did that? This, that's what this this post show is for. Dado, if you're still watching, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. We got to give this guy some some post show screen time. Well, did you see? Um, did you see the? Uh, there was a video for Tom Clancy's The Division. 
where they showed um, they showed a, a typical party experience where these folks were going through. It was a three person party, and they were going through the city and they were checking out, you know, different areas and stuff like that. Mm. And um, there was somebody who was on an iPad who did a drop in thing, and they uh, they were they were like it was almost like a little. Um, I mean, it was it was a UAV. They re they were represented in the game as a UAV, and they were running around and they were highlighting enemies and they were doing flashbangs and shit like that. But um, it, I was just thinking the, the the idea of the companion, the idea of that that technology is now being brought into the uh, the console gaming you know arena. There's no reason why they wouldn't be able to do something like that with um, with Destiny and all this talk about what the Bungie mobile app is going to do. Uh, and things like that, I kind of am crossing my fingers that we're going to see some kind of functionality, some kind of augmented functionality like that that may not be somebody directly playing from the console, but um, you know, on a on a third on a mobile device in, in some format. I didn't think about that. That would be pretty cool. What if you could play as a different ghost? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, fly yeah. around as a ghost instead of a UAV. Right. Like that's. Yep. That was exactly that was exactly the thought that I was having. So, you have you have a drop in player like that, and you're like, you know, you you enter an area like like the, uh, like the wall in old Russia. You enter an area that's all dark, and that's the character that has the mobility to fly around and say, oh, you know, I found a way to turn the lights on, or I found a way to open this door, or whatever, whatnot. Or or hey, you know, you're being attacked. You're being attacked by enemies, and either I've got the ability to fly over here and hit a switch and open up an escape route for you, or Close close off an attack route um, from from the enemy so that you can create a choke point. Little stuff like that that just seems like it's right up their alley in terms of the dynamic nature of play. Um, and we've even heard them talking in um, in interviews. I think Lars Lars had a thing recently where he was talking to somebody at the Game Informer interview, and he was saying he was remarking about, oh, we had you guys play this map where the sight lines were changing. You know, consistently in an interesting way, and things like that. And I think that if they're thinking along those kinds of lines with um, the idea of uh, enhancing the nature of, of that kind of gameplay, the, the variety of that kind of gameplay. Uh, I mean, other folks are doing that, and Bungie's mo has usually been, you know, take a technology that's been established and then iterate on that and apply it in a way that is novel. Um, I don't see why. I don't see any reason to think that. Some other studio that's going to pump out, you know, what seems to be shaping up to be, you know, a triple another AAA title, a competitor of theirs. They wouldn't, um, they wouldn't take some of that aboard. I mean, I'm sure that folks over there have, at the very least, have seen that if they haven't conceived of this functionality already. And yeah. somewhere down the line, it, because it exists, it would be possible. But we'll have to see what their design, their design decisions uh, bear out in that respect. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. That's a good point. Maybe maybe once we hear a little bit more about that, that'd be an, a meaty enough topic for a future episode. Like just just talking about what that companion app could really do. Mm -hmm. That's that's there's definitely a big big opportunity there for for keeping Destiny in your pocket at all times. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. And uh, what's it? Um, is it uh, Battlefield that has the? Um a similar functionality, where that you can look, you can look at the map as you're playing. You can, you can do, um, yeah, not, the, you can not airstrikes, but like um, drop equipment and stuff. Yeah, uh, Battlefield has commander mode, right? Uh, which doesn't work on my phone, and I don't have like an <laughs> iPad or tablet, so it's like, you know, this app is too big for your phone, but we don't have this app on PC, on on PCs in terms of being able to play it for console that I'm aware of, right? But, but I have played the commander mode from my Xbox. Like they let you do that there, and mm -hmm. it's it's pretty cool. And drop recons, sort of like sensor sweep kind of stuff. Drop supply packages. Right. Uh, it's, it's it's pretty sweet. So yeah, that that could be something really cool. It's, uh, <laughs> messing around with your friends' destiny destiny matches. But Absolutely. I was thinking even just like having like like the active roster from like Halo mm -hmm. Reach like on your your phone. Yeah, but it's so much more useful in Destiny because you can say like, "Oh, my friend's over," you know, at, you know, the the Hellmouth on the moon. It's like, let's go meet up with Helm over there. Yeah, and then you know, you can just go over there. It'd be like seeing your friends playing a certain level in Halo campaign, 
and just mm-hmm. being able to walk, you know, now that you know where he's at, you can just walk up to him. Yeah, um, yeah. Espe- so. and, and be and be strategically be one of those one of those you know random not not so random because you're you're seeking them out, but uh, <laughs> you know be one of those encounters in the wild where oh you know if they're you know they they have their backs against the wall, you can kind of sail in there and be like you know be be a presence there and join join the game in that respect. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be very very cool. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Are you wearing a marathon shirt? I am. <laughs> I, I got dressed for the occasion. <laughs> nice. I thought I recognized that. It's, it's always at the top of like the marathon uh, story forums. Yeah. But that's cool. But yeah, yeah. man, it sucks. sucks uh, we had Skype issues, but uh, definitely <laughs> get you on another episode. And yeah, I think yeah, this will yeah. this will probably be my first episode where I don't just cut off the the uh, YouTube archive right after the credits. <laughs> I'll, I think I'll, I'll save that because. Uh, you had some really good points there. Thank you. Uh, well, anyway, all right. Well, I'll see you around, Malagat. Thanks oh, for uh, thanks for sticking around, even though you were just voice. Hey, anytime. <laughs> all right. Do, do, do.